Hi everyone, so um, welcome to today's video. I'm going to be doing another day in the life of a gas engineer video. Uh, I got a lot of positive feedback on the first one that I did, so I'm going to continue doing a few of these as well. Uh, so these are a few jobs that I went to on Friday. It's a bit of a mixed bag again, so hope you guys enjoy it. In today's video, well, this first job I'm going to be doing today, so it's an ATAG system boiler um, that I fitted last year but the system is quite large and we did suspect that we're going to need an additional vessel um customer wanted to just see how it went without it initially because the old boiler um was a valent 637 and that just had the standard vessel inside the boiler and they didn't have any issues so we gave them a price that if we do need to bolt it on this is how much it's going to be we can either do it at the same time or we can do it afterwards um they've opted to try it afterwards so back here now luckily it shouldn't be too difficult We've got the filling loop here on the return, so we're going to take that off, uh, press a T onto there and move the filling loop down and then come off of this T and then up here and just fit the vessel on the wall, literally just right next to the boiler. So it shouldn't be too bad of a job. Okay, so the vessel is all fitted. It's all been piped up, so I've done a little kick there. I was gonna try and use one bit of pipe, but my bending skills aren't quite there yet. So one elbow there, a T there to add on that filling loop again. And yeah, vessel's up there. Let's open up our flow and returns and top up the system pressure and test or any leaks, hopefully not. Let's get that pressure back up. Uh, seems to be about right. Shut the thin loop off. Spurs back on. Now the boiler's gonna go through this purge process, so I'll let it do that. Make sure it fires up all okay, and then we should be done. While it's doing that, I'm just gonna have a little tidy up. Really like this little Sigmund laser level, really handy. Right, this job is to change the diverter valve on a Worcester, which is probably, as far as Worcesters go, the easiest job that you can do because it's literally you've got two screws there, so you can see one on the top right and one on the bottom left undo those two screws, divert a paddle comes out and replace it. So obviously drain the boiler out, disconnect the diverter motor, pop that out. And that is the old style stepper motor anyway, so let's just put that in there for now. I normally just move the paddle up and down a bit just to go. get rid of any excess water in there. Move it up and down. Then we just get a screwdriver and just remove one, two, and that just pops out. I'll show you the new one in a minute when I make it up so that we're ready to go in. So, new diverter valve on the Worcester comes in bits like that. So, there's your motor that goes on last. You've got this little lollipop style thing. Now, that's actually going in to the block. So all you've got to do is make up. So the fork will go into there. Try and get that in there. Right, so that goes in like that. That then slots through there. So like that. And that's what you can see there. And then obviously it's just the two screws. So it's really simple. I'd usually just put a bit of silicon grease in there before I pop it in. And when I take that out, just give it a clean inside as well. There's 
one screw. I'm not worried if I drop it because it comes with new screws anyway. about that now that will just so that front lip pulls out gently probably gonna be a bit of water behind it that will drop it down right, so that's the front cover off now if you can't get this up behind you can use grips but you should just be able to It's all got shitted up inside, you can feel it because the rubber bit doesn't even want to come out. Right, so let's try and get that out. Get a little flat head, a bigger flat head. see that's what the problem is that's all shitted up and that's why that's been passing inside there so I'm gonna clean up the body get rid of this and then pop the new one in so I've given that a bit of a clean in there and pop that down there so that was pretty bad inside there but I don't know if you can see now it's a little bit better than where it was. New diverter motor. There you go. Well, paddle is all made up. So like I said, I just smear a bit of silicone grease on it. Now that literally, if it just finds its way home. screws I bet you'll drop this one now these screws are not magnet ah, that pump is hot Right, that's it. Shut the, the drain off. And I will top up the pressure first. Yeah, let's do that. And then I can put the... <clears throat> Come on. Right. Get up to just one and a half. Done. Right. No leaks. And now all we've got to do new motor. That literally just slides straight in there. Connection. Oh God. Go one way, we'll either go that way or that way. That's it, done. Oh, and the little green cover because that flow turbine adapter well, it's not going to leak because I've changed that one on, here, on this boiler. I've done a bit of work on this one already, so yeah, there's no chance of it leaking for a few years, hopefully. Yeah, I've put that green cover back on, fire it up, and we should be good.
Yeah. How's that? That's <laughs> better, than, better than where it was before, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, Perfect. Definitely. Right, let me show you the bit that was... Should I turn that off now, mate? Yeah, you can turn yeah. that off now. That's the. Uh, oh right. That's the bit that was inside. So this moves up and down right. to go from heating to hot water. And where this got all this crap on it, yeah. it's blocking the ports. Right. So where it was trying to go down the hot hot water side, right. some of it was going down the heating side because it wasn't able to fully move over. Right. So the new one I put in is completely clean. Right. And now you can see. You can, Pretty. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You can feel it straight sick. away. Enough, mate. Awesome. Brilliant. All right, next one. We've got a faulty three port, but luckily the body's fine because that spindle is moving freely by hand. This was just buzzing away. First thing I've checked, if you've had a look at my um, short, you'll see that first thing I'll check is the PCB. Now this PCB looks fine. Nice sort of sun scorching, so likely to be just a faulty motor. So I'm gonna swap it over now. There we go. That's been changed over. It's the old dodgy motor. That's still really hot to touch. I mean, this was still motored open, even when there was no demand earlier. Obviously now it's shut. If we boost the heating. Uh, there we go, you can hear that's already starting to motor over. That center demand back to the boiler. Now if I turn that off. Cancel the boost. Obviously that will stay in its last position because it's a three port, but now if I boost the hot water. There you go. Must be satisfied at the moment, otherwise that would kick in. Oh, well, yeah, he's kicked in. Now if I turn it off. That's stayed in that position. Cool, job done. Let's go on to the next one. Right, this one, we've got a wireless programmable room stat in combination with twin channel programmer so the customer here is saying that the heating's not been working at the right times that's been set on here and that's because the times that were set on here weren't matching up to the time set on here so what I've done for the customer on this one uh, she's elderly so she doesn't really understand how to use it so I've set this just on manual so this can just be turned up and down and it will work from the programmer there. Also, apparently the system was power flush recently. This one radiator wasn't getting hot. That lock shield was shut. So just open that up. And now I've got heat coming through here. Apparently this has been working since before Christmas, but all it was, lock shield was turned off. 